in a particular way. Um, no one would have ever predicted that the Occupy movement would have this, the kind of impact that it did. Although one can say it's not really a movement per se, but it had a profound impact on, uh, on, on, on the way people think about the mm. structure of uh, our uh, economic system in the U.S. and you know, all over the world. Mm. And during the, the height, I think there was a survey done uh, in New York, and the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers said that they identified with those people who were in their, you know, s sleeping in the tents and uh, trying to figure out uh, um, a way to uh, give expression to their opposition. Um, I'm hoping that um, that that sense of urgency continues. Um, and I know that um, it has to be combined with a, a, a kind of patience, because things aren't going to change immediately. Um, but I think that uh, the more I meet with young people, uh, the more I'm convinced that this is a really important moment. Uh, and I will tell you that I participated in a, a mobilization in Oakland. Um, and you said you were there too. It was a general strike in Oakland uh, in the aftermath of a police attack on uh, some of the members of the, the Occupy uh, movement, and particularly a young, um, a young veteran, a uh, young Iraq war veteran who, was, uh, who had a brain injury as a result. And there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. It was just, it was so amazing to see, from that moment, to see uh, such a diversity, such a diversity in terms of race and ethnicity and gender and age. Uh, and what was, um, and I know I kind of uh, uh, find myself uh, thinking like uh, my mentor, Herbert Marcuse, did in 1968. <laughs> But that it was, uh, but what was what was so amazing about that mobilization was that there was this this happiness. Everyone was so happy, and the you know the normal seriousness of the movement just it seemed to lift. And everybody was smiling and laughing, and there were children, and there were animals, and and people were saying, uh, uh, "This is it." <laughs> I, I saw people who were my age, you know, who've been involved in the movement forever. And they said, we've, we've done it, finally, after 40 years, after 50 years. <laughs> and, and so, uh, and of course, you know, it, it was a moment, but it was a very defining moment. And I'm hoping that we can continue to build on that. Uh, uh, and I should say that uh, there are a lot of um, various campaigns going on as a result of the Occupy movement. There's a lot of anti-eviction work. Uh, where people who were evicted from their homes uh, uh, by the police have uh, activists come and they put their uh, furniture back in the house and they protect them, which reminds me of what happened. I wasn't born then, but I, I heard stories about the 1930s and you know what uh, was done during that period. So I'm I'm excited. I think that uh, that. That we'll that we'll see a lot of um, new um, imaginative uh, organizing, and also around gender issues. I haven't mentioned gender issues, so gender not only in terms of uh, uh, male female, but uh, gender you know transgender issues, uh, um, what we call gender nonconforming people. I can tell you that uh, within the prison abolitionist movement, there's a very interesting and exciting um, um, campaign around the rights of trans prisoners, transgender prisoners, that is designed to also demonstrate how the structure of the prison system uh, reinforces the binary notion of gender and is actually central to the development of a gender ideology that 
does not allow us to think outside of uh, two poles, male and female. So, so uh, it's not going to be like 68. <laughs> it's going to be different. Uh, but we'll certainly build on uh, the, the one.